Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This Mass is offered for the repose of the souls of Myrtle Victor, Malcolm Erin, Rochelle Samuels, Chris and Mary Ann Chetty, Catherine and Perry Hiriman, Joanna and Louis Nelson, Maurice Pugin, Father Albert Danker, Terry Klein, and all souls in purgatory. In thanksgiving and special intentions for Natasha Houston and family, Darren Samuels and family, and Diane and Leon Erin and family. In thanksgiving for prayers answered from Denise and Karim Hiriman and family. In thanksgiving, special intentions and birthday blessings for Carl Houston, Chironisa Abrahams, Denise Singh, Lauren Liberty on her 21st birthday, and Lionel Baxendale on his 92nd birthday. Special intentions and healing for Father Chris Neville, Patrick Magerno, Tom Harden, Lauren Smith, Bernie Nelson, and Vanessa Dunn. In thanksgiving and special intentions for Yuvir Jagannath. Special intentions and healing for all those suffering from COVID-19 virus. Welcome to Mass, and a special welcome to all our visitors. Today, we are celebrating the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our theme, in baptism we commit ourselves to God, and we can express this pledge of commitment in every aspect of our lives, including marriage. As we prepare for Holy Mass, we pause for a moment of silent prayer. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us now pause for a moment and acknowledge our sins. 
And so prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries of our salvation and ask for pardon from God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And together we praise God as we pray. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. The our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. In those days, Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, if you be unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, and who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will bless the Lord at all times. His Praise shall be ever on my lips. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Taste, taste. And
and see that the Lord is so good. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together praise his name. In my need he has answered me. Delivering me from all my fears. Taste, taste and see that the Lord is so good. Taste and see the goodness of the take refuge in him. Nothing shall they want. I will turn from sin to do your will. Seek peace and follow in its way. For the Lord raises up the lives of the just who cry out to him. Taste, taste and see that the Lord is so good. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brethren, be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, be subject to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its saviour. As the church is subject to Christ, so let wives also be subject in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Even so, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no man ever hates his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, and I mean in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord, our spirit and life. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, many of the disciples of Jesus said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples murmured at it, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is of no avail. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you that do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who those were that did not believe, and who it was that would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples drew back and no longer walked with him. Jesus said to the twelve, Will you also go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when you put God first, you have freedom and your marriage is even better. Today we celebrate the 21st Sunday of year being. And in our readings today, we encounter the fact that we all have choices to make in life at some point in our lives decisions to make. We have some small decisions to make and big decisions to make. But there is one decision we all have to make, and that is to decide for God or not, to live with God first in our life or not. And this is the big decision we see being made in the first reading today in the book of Joshua and in the gospel. In the first reading, after Joshua brought the Hebrews across the river Jordan into the promised land of Canaan, he asked them to decide whom they would serve, either God or the pagan gods their ancestors ancestors worshiped. Naturally, they chose to worship God. They had seen what God did for their parents, bringing them out of Egypt. Indeed, to whom else shall we go? Going to anyone or anything else would be a mistake. And we would have to double back in our tracks once again. Master, To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Only in Jesus have we freedom, have have we the freedom we seek. Only when we live with Jesus in our life do all the parts of our life fit together. Whenever as individuals or even as a country we have decisions to make, we can say to Jesus, Master, to whom shall we go? The words Jesus told them are spirit and life. In other words, if they turn from Jesus, they are turning from life to death. 
If they turn from Jesus, they are turning from light to darkness. And if they turn from Jesus, they are turning from the one who gave them the new commandment to love one another. And going back again to the custom of an eye and a tooth for a tooth. If they turn from Jesus, they are turning from the one who showed them the correct understanding of the law of, of Moses. To go back again to try, but never succeed in fulfilling all the 613 laws of Moses. If they turn from Jesus, they turn to, from freedom to slavery. But Peter understood correctly and responded to Jesus. He said, Master, to whom shall you go? You have the words of eternal life. So as we see it, unfortunately, in the gospel today, many of Jesus' followers turned away from him when they heard him preaching on the Eucharist. The preaching of Jesus, which we have listened to during these recent Sundays, hearing Jesus speak about his body and blood as nourishment was too much for them. Jesus told them, that their ancestors ate bread in the desert and died. But the bread Jesus would offer would allow them to live forever. And when they were contemplating not to follow Jesus anymore, he practically made an appeal to them to reconsider when he said to them that the spirit gives life while the flesh has nothing to offer. The people from Joshua, they also saw that what God allowed to happen to their parents when their parents rebelled against God, everything went badly. And, on the, and although their parents left Egypt, they never entered Canaan. Instead, it was their sons and daughters who got to enjoy Canaan. They saw that obeying God and putting God first brings a blessing, but forgetting about God and turning one's back on God leaves one in the desert. They saw that when you put God first, you have freedom, but when you turn away from God, you are not free. Putting God first helps you to realize your potential, but turning from God leaves you stagnant and stuck. They saw that putting God first brings you a much better life. But rebelling against God is really inflicting a wound on yourself. Yes, that first generation that crossed the Jordan into, the, into Canaan had learned so much by seeing their rebellious parents die in the desert. They did not want to make the same mistake as their parents. So they said to Joshua that they too, like Joshua and his family, wanted to serve God. That freedom and a new and better way of living is what we see played out in the second reading from Ephesians, especially the consequences of belief in Christ for marriage. Everyone, the letter advises, is to submit to everyone else. The way it is said in Greek means that you make this act of submission yourself so it means mutually submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. It's not something that's forced on you because our Christian homes are to be homes of love, modeled on the love of Christ. The reading continues by advising husbands, husbands to love their wives as Christ loved the church. And how did Christ love the church? Christ loved the church by dying for the church, or as the reading says, by handing himself over for her. This reading means husband, husbands are to love their wives in a sacrificial way to the end. So when the letter says that the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, it's not talking about power. Christ was not into power or control. 
If the husband is the head like Christ, then he is asked to love like Christ. And to make sure we get the message, we are told, husbands are to love their wives as their own bodies. Husband and wife are one body in marriage, as the book of Genesis tells us. So it is natural for a spouse to love the other as their own body, because they are now one body in marriage. This is a totally new way of understanding marriage in the first century. Nowhere else do we get a description of marriage like this. Those who turned away from Jesus in the gospel today turned away from all the beautiful consequences that the new life in Christ brings. The Hebrews in the first reading decided to worship God because they saw that when you put God first, you have freedom. But when you turn away from God, you are not free. They saw that obeying God and putting God first brings a blessing, but forgetting about God and turning one's back on God leaves one in the desert. In the gospel, Peter understood and responded to Jesus. Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Indeed, to whom shall we go? Going to anyone or anything else would be a mistake, as we would have to double back in our tracks once again. Only in Jesus have we the freedom we seek. The second reading gives us a beautiful picture of the consequences of the new life in Christ for the families. So I'd like to ask and end with this question. Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Amen. Let us now rise as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism, the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You have the words of eternal life. We have been strengthened by God's word broken for us. And now we turn to the Lord in faith, asking for all our needs. 
for a desire to serve God in the world. And like the people of Israel, we have chosen to serve the Lord our God. May we be good servants of God, witnesses to God's teaching about how we are to live. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. For those in our community who are married, married Christians are commanded to give way to one another in obedience to Christ. May wives and husbands in our community grow in forgiveness and love as they witness to Christ in their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. For, per for perseverance in faith. May we be strong in faith, choosing to follow the Lord even when his teaching is difficult and confessing him always as the Holy One of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a deeper understanding of the Eucharist, may we who celebrate the Eucharist deepen our understanding of what God has done for us in Christ. And when we gather, may we be nourished by the broken word and the broken bread. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. For all the sick, that they may be restored to good health and for those who have died, that they may rest in the peace of the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own special needs, let us place them before God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The coronavirus prayer, God of all, we cry we out, cry to, out you to you for help. help. In, in your mercy, mercy hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Protect, Protect us, Lord, and be with, with us, especially those of us who are, who are most vulnerable during this coronavirus pandemic. Move us to reach out in love to our neighbors, near and far, so that the humble may be exalted and the hungry filled with good things. Grant, Grant us, us the, the courage, courage not, not to rush back to, to our old ways, but to rebuild our world together, creating foundations of justice and, and concern with, with equality and, and peace for all. We ask Amen. this through Christ yes, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. God of all consolation, you gather your people to teach them your ways and to remind them of your mighty deeds. With confidence, we ask you to hear our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Brethren, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his salvation. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis, uh, Pope Siegfried Joachim, a bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Malcolm, Aaron, Michael, Michael Victor, Rachel, Samuels, Chris and Mary, Mary and Chetty, Catherine and Barry, Amen, jo Joanna and Louis Nelson, Maurice Persian, Father Albert Danker, Terry Klein, and all souls in purgatory, and all those who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Anne and St. Therese, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be called as to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. parish notices for this week. We are happy to announce that there has been a marriage in the parish. So our congratulations to Denver Cupido and Keshleen Naidu, who were married on Saturday. May their marriage be filled with joy, peace, and love always. Please pray for our newly married couple. First Holy Communion 2021, please take note of the following. First Holy Communion will take place over the weekend of Saturday the 11th of September at 5 p.m. Mass, Sunday the 12th of September 8 and at 10 a.m. Masses. All those Masses will be here at St. Anne's. This is to accommodate all the children and their families. And Father Du is making a special plea. He's asking that parishioners who are not involved with First Holy Communion to please go to Masses at St. Teresa's or alternatively to go to Masses during the week. We ask you to please keep our children in prayer as they prepare. The next baptism preparation for parents and godparents will take place at St. Anne's on Saturday the 18th of September at 10 a.m. Baptism will take place on Saturday, the 24th of September at 10 a.m. Parents must make an appointment with Father and complete the necessary forms.
please contact the parish office to make the appointment. Godparents must be practicing Catholics. In lieu of COVID-19 restrictions, we are unfortunately still seeing cases of COVID-19 rising. So we ask that you please be vigilant and cautious in your response to this pandemic. Please be responsible. Yours and the life of another depend on you. We urge you to get vaccinated when your age group is called upon to do so. We can all play a significant role in getting some form of normality back into society, but it will take everyone's buy-in to do the simple things. And in light of this, sadly, we will have to postpone confirmation till further notice. We would also like to take the opportunity to extend our gratitude and admiration for the exquisite work done on our banner. We would like to say thank you to Mr. Kevin Richards for your kind service to our parish community. Finally, those who are celebrating birthdays or anniversaries during this week, you are now invited to stand at home for your blessing from Father Mdutuzi. Our helpers in the name of the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. God our Father, you are the source of life. We give thanks to you for the gift of life of these, your sons and daughters who celebrate this week, their birthdays and anniversaries. May they experience your presence in their lives, fill them with joy, fill them with peace in their lives, and may they share that life and joy and peace with those who are dear to them, especially the members of their family and those close to them. We ask for this special blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you now and forever. Let us go in the peace of Christ to announce the good news of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. We've got a great, big, wonderful God. over us, great big wonderful God, we got a great big wonderful God, great big wonderful God, oh how he loves everyone, how much for all of us, great big wonderful God, he never, never, ever leaves us, he's always standing by, to pick us up if we stumble with the apple of his heart. We got a great big wonderful God, great big wonderful God. Oh, how he loves every one of us, done so much for all of us. Great big wonderful God, we got a great big wonderful God. Great big wonderful God, oh what a glory it is to sing praises to our coming King, great big wonderful 